Fantastic. Hello, hello, hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to this Hour of Code special stream. I see lots of new faces and some old faces here in the Twitch chat already, and we have an hour of some interesting stuff up ahead. So if you've got any questions, any thoughts, you want to say hello or anything like that, feel free to say so in the Twitch chat. I want to say a little thank you to Coding Game who gave me the idea and encouraged me to do this live stream here today. We'll be doing lots of Coding Game later in the stream. So hello to uh, everybody, like I just said. Now, first things first. Oh, there's Tom. Tom's just said hello. Hello, Tom. Um, I am not used to doing a, a stream in this format. I'm very much, I, I've done lots of streams where I play games and you watch or you join in or both and then that's about it. But today I'm going to attempt to be giving you a little bit more than that. So let's, let's dial it back a little bit. Let's come back and start at the very beginning then, shall we folks? So let's start with, who am I? Yes. <laughs> I have slides for the first time ever on Twitch TV. Um, we're going to go through a few of these quite quickly because my memory is rubbish and we're going to let you guys uh, um, learn about code and the importance of code. So, who am I? I am indeed Master Hellish. I'm a YouTuber and live streamer and just an all-round geek. I love technology. I love electronics. I love oh, fantastic. Coding games hosting. Thanks for ho hosting Coding Game, guys. Um... Yeah, I love all sorts of technology. I love space and space travel and all that sort of thing. I'm into coding. You might be able to tell from my t-shirt. It is, I think, is that backwards to you guys? No, it's not backwards to you guys. I don't know if you can sit. Should we go large? Let's go large again. Ugh, there we go. Um, if you don't understand this now, you might understand it by the end of the stream. So we'll see about that. Um, and Tom says we're going to see businessman New Master Hellish tonight. Fantastic. So we'll see about that. And back to here. So yes, an all-round geek. If you want to know anything more about me, everything can be found at my website, masterhellish.net. Okay, so um, let's move on to the next thing. What's the next thing? What is Hour of Code? Of course, this is the Hour of Code live stream uh, in coordination with um, Coding Game. So Hour of Code is a nationwide and in indeed now worldwide international um, event um, led by the computer science um, week and um, you can see I've got a little little blurb little blurb on screen um, and yeah uh, hour of code is there to promote um, computer science to everybody it's there to dispel myths it's there to open up a world which some people don't always see into and something which is very interesting to many people who don't even know that it's going to be interesting for them um lots of says uh how come the random stream did i miss something or did you said you would be streaming today lots of i have i have said i've been streaming i would be streaming today if you not follow me on twitter New twitch Fantastic. or anything like that i don't know but uh yes I, um, we're going to be streaming today for this hour, so we're four minutes in already, so we're going to crack on. This is not a tutorial. If you want a tutorial about how to code, you're in the wrong place. This is a, a crash course, an introduction, some fun. Um, it's not comprehensive, and there's lots of generalizations, okay? So I'm kind of, you're just kind of skimming over the surface of the code. If, if learning code was an ocean, you'd be a stone skimming across it and bouncing along and then probably splosh into it at some point um, as you drowned. But no, we're not going to drown in code today. Okay, so we're going to have a look at a few different things here. Um, we've got... Uh, let, let's have a look at go through this. So we've done this little bit of an intro. We're going to look at what code is, why code's important. We're going to give you a quick crash course in what binary is, if you don't know that already, and then how codes work. Those two things are kind of linked together. And then we'll tell you a little bit more about where you can find out more about this sort of thing. Okay. Um, and then we're going to go into the coding basics. We're going to be looking at the language of code, instructions, variables, loops, conditions, and functions. We're not going to be going too deep into this. This is meant to be 
an introduction for people who don't really know too much about this sort of thing. If you already know some code, it's going to be fun anyway. You can join in. Um, yeah, this this is basically me trying to code whilst everybody corrects me. That is right, Tom. Thank you very much. Tom, the ever-supportive person in my Twitch chat. Uh, and then we're going to have a go at doing some coding together. If you are watching this now and you're thinking, I've never done any coding before, it'd be nice to do a little bit. Uh, we're going to do some Visual Basic script. And if you have a Windows computer that you're watching on, or if you're watching on a phone or tablet and you have like a, a Windows computer nearby or uh, or a, either a laptop or something, um, you can join in and you can do some coding with us too. We're just going to do a couple of quick, easy examples. And then we're going to get into coding game and we'll see more of that later. And we're going to have some fun on there. Okay, so we're just going to cover these topics through the list here and then we're going to crack on. So, what is code? Computer code is a set of rules and instructions. It's a, it's a, kind of like a recipe is a list of ingredients and instructions to make a cake. Code is a list of rules and instructions made up of words and letters to make a program or a script, something that will do something on a device, usually a computer, not always. Um, you have to get it all in the right order. And you have to get it um, correct, which sometimes I don't. Uh, everybody makes mistakes. But then you can do this code. You can use this code to actually program things. So it's basically a load of letters and numbers. That's all it really is. Okay. But why is coding important? Okay. So coding is used absolutely everywhere. Okay, this website now, Twitch TV, that you're using to watch this live stream was built using code. The computer you're using to watch it on, the operating system, so if it's a computer, maybe Windows or Mac or Linux, that was built using code. The phone, if you're using a phone to watch this, the Android or iOS or whatever you've got there, probably not Windows phone, I don't like them. Um, they were built using everything like this is built using code and it's not just computers then apps on your phone all code calculators run on code even tvs these days run on code smart tvs are, are not just the only ones as well in the future and at the moment cars run on code you might just be thinking of these google cars you've seen in the news driving around by themselves yes they run on code but a lot of the computers uh, a lot of the cars and stuff that people are driving around in now also run on code the parking sensors will have rudimentary code operation within them the gps navigation runs on code everything runs on code in today's modern life and it is really difficult to get away from it and we need people to get involved with code to understand code and maybe even go in all technologies use code in one form or another says lots of that is very true even if it's just basic or fundamental code it's there and also if you're in a job that's not directly related to the computer sciences so i am an it support technician so i support a certain sector of it and i use code on a daily basis a moderately daily basis anyway but there's other sectors where you wouldn't necessarily think you'd need it like banking or what was it um, medicine and journalism is the ones that we've got in the examples up here I can give you an example of how an accountant might need to know code. Um, I was speaking to an accountant recently and they were looking at some reports, trying to work out some figures for their accounts. And then this report was coded to work between two particular dates. And they were like, well, that's all well and good, but I want different dates. So they had to go into the settings and change the code. And there was actual code in the background, the settings that specified the dates in this particular situation. So this accountant is not a computer programmer. He's not a computer scientist. But they had to interact with code. And luckily, they understood enough to be able to do it. So it's not just important for people who make programs. It's important for loads of people. And of course, when you look at younger ch children, Children are now learning code in schools, and that is another fantastic point to remember, that when I went to college, I started learning code at that level. I'd, I'd gone through what in the UK we call um, secondary school, and then we call it sixth form, and then we go to college, which is kind of a similar level to university, or you can go from college to university. But when I went there, I was started to learn the things that 
children nine years younger at that point are learning now so if i was i don't know 20 for example at the time that i learned it 11 year olds are learning that stuff now so getting ahead is very important um Gwabe says good co uh, basic coding is good to know generally it is indeed okay so next up what do we have crash course in binary oh my goodness right okay computers don't use words they don't even on a basic level use letters a computer is basically a, at its core at its heart a big pile of transistors its electrical component which is either on or off so they're just switches these on or off states are represented by a one or a zero in the way that programming works so let's have a quick look at that and we're going to use an example by jumping into minecraft okay so for those of you who don't know minecraft's just a game you don't really need to know that but in minecraft we have switches here it is it's called a lever in the game and um it has two states it's either off or when you switch it it's on and this is very much like the states of the memory and the processing of your computer in fact people have built computers inside this game basic ones granted but they've built them nonetheless if we use some cable in the game they call it redstone so if we use some basic cable you can see that the cable is either on or it is off we can put a lamp on the end just a light and the lamp is either on or off and this is binary this is how binary works and what the computer does it has a various number of positions of which your binary can work so we're just going to instead of using the wire we're just going to put the levers right in front of our nodes here i don't know why that lever went around the other way and you can see that we've got five lots of ones and zeros here at the minute these could all can be considered zero they're all off and if we do that we've got one as a, and then some zeros now when we're reading we read from right to left so there we go we've got one zero 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 and then if we do this we've got zero one zero 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 and this is what we call base two maths it's called base two because there's only two numbers in it one or zero the math that most of us know and dare i say love is base 10 maths that's because we have the nine main digits and our zero so we have 10 digits to go from okay so is he going to teach us between converting between binary and base 10 I'm not going to go through it fully, but I'm going to give you an example. So, uh, let's do it with just three. Okay, we're going to have a quick look with just three. Okay, so these um, three nodes represent the three points in uh, our computer. Three on-off switches. So, in, in our lives, in normal world, we would say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 10. But this is not how we look at it in a computer. In a computer, this would be represented as zero. So we have zero, zero, zero. But each of these can be worth something if we line them up. So the first one is worth one, the equivalent of one in base 10. The next one was worth the equivalent of two in base 10. And the, and the third one here is worth the equivalent of four in base 10. In fact, they double in size as you go further and further into the distance and can be quite complicated. But if we have here, we, we have this would represent zero. If we flip that there, this represents one. This represents two. And that represents four. So how do we represent five? Well, to represent five, we need one plus four. So that represents five in our binary example. If we want six, well, that's two and four. And if we want seven, we have one, two, and four. So this is basic ideas of binary. If you don't fully understand that, that's not a problem at this stage. As long as you know that binary is basically ones and zeros, ons and offs, that's really all we need for the main section of what's next. So let's move on, okay? Let's get rid of Minecraft. We don't like Minecraft anymore. So ones and zeros, that's, our, that's your crash course in binary inside your crash course of programming. I thought the third block was four. It is. The third block was four. Did I say something else? If, if I said something else, that the, the um, you've got one, 
two and four. Okay? Yeah. So, Gwabe says in... Gwabe agrees. Okay, so, how does code work? Okay, so we know about binary. How does code work? Well, when writing code, you are writing the middle ground... New follower. Fantastic. We are... Yeah, you are writing the code between the person, the human that's writing it, and the computer that only knows things in ones and zeros. So that code is the middle ground. So we talk in words, we talk in expressions and emotions and stuff, but we mainly use words for uh, verbal communication and written, whereas a computer just uses these on and off switches, these ones and zeros, okay? Um, so, here we go. So the source code, which is what your program is so you write your program that is code the full name source code is translated into an assembly language now you don't need to worry about the details of that but it, it's basically moved from the way you type it in into a better way that the computer can understand it this assembly code is then translated into machine language and then that machine language is translated directly and executed as binary code and that is where the binary code comes in Okay, so you don't need to know the details of these steps um, in this uh, here, but it's nice to know about that there are several steps that the computer does in the background to turn your source code, your code, into something that it can understand. Okay, so it gets translated as it goes. All right, so uh, what's up next? Well, where can you find out more about this sort of thing? Well, there's a couple of really awesome resources. I would say if you want to start from scratch, check out Scratch, okay? If you don't know anything about code, go to Scratch, and it is a great way to get it started because it's, it's, there's no typing of words to begin with. It's a graphical way of working with things. It's really good. Coding Game, which we're going to be using very soon, is um, a really good resource. Once you've got the basic concepts of what variables and stuff are, then it's brilliant. You've got, you, you can go in there, have some fun. It is fantastic. I you very much use the w3 schools online web tutorials um if i want to if i can't remember something i go there yeah, okay um Gwabe says he used scratch to make a racetrack which sounds cool uh there's also the code.org site which um has loads of things on there and there are many 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 more places on the internet where you can find out information but there's a few to get you started if you want to find out more about code so the language of code. I mentioned that you um, that you write code down, and that code is in a particular way of doing it. So you don't write the words you would normally speak. You write particular words and letters and numbers in a particular way, so that the computer can understand what you're saying. Because it just it it, it doesn't know the the syntax. It doesn't know words in the same way that humans do. So you have to say certain things in a certain order in a certain way. And that's the difficulty which most people start with with code. And the way that you write these down and the way that they're then interpreted by the computer um, varies because there's different languages. Just as humans have different languages like English, American, French, Spanish, I could go on. There are so many languages out there. Coding also has languages. Okay. But they are some that are very similar and there are some that are progressions of other languages why are there so many languages well there are lots of languages because there's different reasons those languages were around sometimes they were used for different things for example sql listed here um is used um and is designed just for interacting with databases where javascript is designed and mainly used for working with websites so they're targeted at different things and also there's new versions of code becomes so uh, the, the, the sorry the programming language becomes so old it an archaic way of doing things and newer and better technologies are introduced so new versions of the programming languages are made sometimes the language isn't just always updated to a newer version sometimes they bring out a whole new flavor of the language altogether so there are different languages of code that's another thing that sometimes people struggle with um, Tom says, have you ever thought about becoming an IT teacher? Yes, I actually looked into it and I had the application form. But that's, a, <laughs> but that's another story. Okay. So, 
what we're looking at now. We're actually getting into how to do code, which we're not doing too bad. Um, I'm a little behind time, but I'm going to try and push it forward because I want to get into coding game very soon. So we'll check out more about that soon. So here we go. So as I've mentioned, code is usually a list of instructions. Okay, so uh, you have a number of items listed down in these words and letters and you have to ex they get executed okay now again this is a generalization things can be different between different programming languages and different ways that it's written so you may have a command that does one thing that is read and interpreted by the computer and executed then on the next line of code you might have something else that it has to do so the instructions are there in the code and are executed one by one now there's these things called variables. And if you don't know about code, they might seem like a bit of a weird concept at first. But in code, we don't always want to write exactly what we mean. We might want to have something that we don't know what it is, or that we want to change, or that we want to store. So a variable is very much like a box, okay? This is just a cardboard box that some perfume arrived in for a Christmas present. It wasn't me. Um, okay, so it's very, a variable is very much like a box. It is a container for something. You can put things in it. You might put words in it. You might put a number in it. And you might be able to put an image in it in some programming languages. And you can label them. And in, in very often, sometimes, in most programming languages, you have to label the box because if you've got lots of boxes with lots of different very deep uh, pieces of information in you need to know which box you're talking about you can't just have a big stack of boxes and say hey where's that word I need or where is that number that I was storing you need to know which box to go fetch and so does the computer variables are places to store pieces of information it does it very well we'll look at some examples very soon What's next? Loops, 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 loops are just pretty much that. Um, loops are parts of programs which allow you to repeat something. So a loop will be a section of code and inside that section there will be some instructions and those instructions get repeated usually based on either a condition or a counter. So you may want to move forward a certain number of times and instead of saying move forward move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward, you might put it in a loop and say that your move forward command is in a loop that loops around 10 times. So instead of typing it over and over again, it does it for you over and over again. Right, so that is the basic idea of loops. It gets you to, you can repeat code in certain ways. Uh, conditions. Oh, we all need conditions in programming. Conditions in programming allow you to execute code based on the condition. So you can say whether you want a piece of code to execute or not. In our example where we was making our... Let's have a robot. There we are, we've got a robot. He's called Brain. If you read it wrong, it's not. he's not really called that. Right, so um, does he speak? Hey, I just speak. So if you've got a robot and you say you want it to move forward, well, that's all well and good. But if you say move forward if you haven't fallen off the edge of the table or move forward if you haven't already moved forward five spaces, then you can put conditions in that makes him go so far or turn back. You can get some decisions put in there based on certain criteria. And that's what conditions are. OK, so... Very often conditions generally uh, form in most programming languages around the if. They are, as Brian's closer look, the Twitch chat want a closer look at Brian. Whee! Um, so, conditions are in code as well. It allows us to say whether we want something to be done or not. Uh, that is not uh, product placement. Um, functions! Functions are brilliant things as well. Functions are basically... New in their follower. most basic section, Fantastic. are a block of code which can be called, which can be 
used. So you might write a whole load of code and you might think, hmm, I might need that again. If you put it in a function, you can then use it again without writing it all out again. And we'll look at more of an example of that later. It is basically a subsection of code. Okay, what else do we have? Well, nothing. I've said, let's code. So we're going to do some examples now. We're going to look at the examples of instructions, execution, uh, and the execution of those instructions, variables, loops, conditions, and functions. So this is where I'm going to now do some basic coding on the screen. And this is where you guys can follow along if you want to as well. Okay. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? Well, if you have a Windows machine, get yourself sorted, get yourself onto the desktop and get yourself ready to be able to write a piece of code. Okay. So let's go now to my desktop. Here we are. This is my desktop. What we're going to do is we're going to write some Visual Basic scripts. Now, VB is a programming language, just like the other ones that we saw previously, uh, Java and SQL and so forth, SQL. Um, and we're going to use a basic form of that, VB script. And you can look that up if you want to. Um, now, to write a VB script, it is so really, really, really easy. All you need is a notepad. Okay, so I'm just going to go get a notepad document. It's on the wrong screen, but here it is. Ta-da! And then what we'll do is we write our code in here, and then uh, we'll save it and execute it. Now, we've got a couple of people who are running off to start their computers up and laptops. I see them in the Twitch chat saying that. So we will wait for them to catch up. But let's, let's zoom in on this pad here so we can see... Uh, a little bit better. No, let's not zoom in that way. That's that's code for later. Let's that's code for later. So I've put myself over in the other corner of the screen so we can have this here. There we are. Brilliant. Right now we want some code. Let's find some code, shall we? What are we going to code? So happy to see you going into depth with coding again. I've uh, I have to support you. Let me know how it's. I know it's not much for Viewer Plus. But I'm a viewer plus with you all. Thank you very much, lots of for being a viewer plus. Okay, so let me just go fetch what I was looking for. Here we go. Right. So the first things we're going to look at is the execution of a few different things. To get the computer to execute this, we need to save it in a file format that the computer knows that it's code. Because at the moment, if we save this, we go file and save, and we go to, I don't know, our downloads folder okay you can see here the file name is a dot txt we don't want that okay what we want to be able to save it as is a dot vbs it's a it's a way for us to know what the code is going to be so we're going to say my uh, first program there we are and we're going to be able to save this my first program Okay, you can see various different things that are in there. And we're at the end, we need to put our dot .vbs. That's the important bit. Okay, so if we save that, it'll be on my desktop somewhere. Let me go find it. Where is it gone? Come here. No, it's not in my desktop. It's, oh, let me just go fetch it for you guys. Do, 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 do. Nope, it's not in that folder. Uh, let's go in this folder. Nope, that's not the right folder and there it is i found it we're going to move it to the desktop so instead of being a, the standard text sort of um text document it's now got this little script symbol on there okay uh, and that means that we can execute this just by double clicking it but if we go into edit you can see that it's blank we haven't put anything in there yet so we need to write some code in there so our code is in here and it's going to get executed. Right, so where are we? Let's code. So first things first, um, let's start off by calling a pre-made function and putting something on the screen. I think that sounds like a good way to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to call a function called msg. B-O-X. 
Okay, now functions have brackets around them in most programming languages, and they do in this one. So you've got MSG BOX with curly brackets at the end. And inside the curly brackets, that is where we're going to pass uh, it some information. And in this case, we're going to give it some characters. We're going to give it some words. So we start open with a quote, and we're going to say, hello, Twitch. And then we close it with this speech mark as well. Okay. Tom Brad says, I've never done coding in Notepad. I've always used a, a coding program. I really do prefer starting in Notepad. It gives you real raw access to exactly what's going on. And that is it. That is our first program. It's done. Okay. MSG, BOX, curly bracket, speech mark, whatever you want. Close speech mark, close bracket. And if we save that, file, save, we can double click on the icon that's on our desktop. And there we go. We've got a little symbol that's come up in the middle of the screen that says, hello, Twitch. And it's that easy. Okay, we, just a program, that's code, done. Sorted, finished. Job, jobs are good and for coding side of things. We can do more with this though. Okay, so remember these boxes that we talked about. Okay, these variables that can hold information. Well, what we can do is we can say that there's a box there. We can say that there's a variable there, put something into it, and then display it in our message box. So let's move our message box down the screen here, just by putting some extra lines in. And let's say, right, that we want to uh, call a brand new variable. So in this particular programming languages, we use the word dim. Dim um, tells the program that what we're about to put after this is going to be the name of a brand new variable, okay? Uh, so let's say we're going to dim something and we're going to call it um, my box, okay? So we are, we've got my box. Now, that box is empty at the moment, okay? Let's, uh, let's put something in it. So we put my box is equal to, and then we can put something inside it. Let's say um, master hellish. So we put the word master hellish inside my box. There we are. So there's speak much marks around the word master hellish because it is text. And in this programming language, that's what we need to do. Now, what we can do is then put this label of our variable called my box inside this function here like this ignore that noise okay and that what we're going to do then is that message box function which I'll highlight here is going to look inside our variable and whatever is inside our variable it's going to display it in our message box so let's save that and run it just by double clicking and there it is we get a message box on the screen that says master hellish okay so there we are. That is that bit done already. Now, of course, we want we can do more things with this. Let's do a basic calculator. And I mean really basic, okay? So, let's get rid of this for now, okay? Now, there's another thing we can put in this. So, we've had a message box pop up with text in it. We can actually get a box and that pops up on the screen where you can type something in. Okay, that's a nice little function for us to use. So we're going to get an input. So let's say dim input. Okay, so we've got this variable called input. And then we're going to put something inside it. Okay, so what we're going to put inside it is whatever we input from this box that pops up on the screen. So we're going to put in our input box And whatever our input box is said, we're going to get it. So we're going to say, enter a number. Okay. So the enter a number is what gets displayed on the screen. And then what gets typed in is going to get put inside our variable input. Okay. A little bit behind schedule, but we'll get into coding game very soon. Um, and then what we can do is we can then call our message box, msg box, and what we can do is we can put that on, uh, we can put our input variable in there. 
and uh, display what the user typed in. So let's save that. There we are, save it and run it. So we get this pop-up box that says enter a number. If we enter a number seven and click OK, we get a pop-up box which says seven. But we said we was going to do a basic calculator, OK? Is there a way to make your writing on stream bigger? Uh, I can do. Let's let's make this... Uh, no, that's not my writing on the stream. Well, that's not my writing on the stream at all. Let's put that back. Uh, display capture. There we are. Let's do that. So there we go. Uh, there is our current code. And if I run it, you can see it says enter a number. There, we're going to put in the number 9. And then a box pops up that says 9. Right, but we're going to do some calculations on this. What we're going to do is we're going to say, well, our input variable, right, we're going to do something to it. We're going to make it um, equal to 5. Okay, now when we make our input equal to 5, it's going to overwrite what was ever in there previously. So if we run our program, which is here, it says enter your number. If we enter 6 and click OK, Okay, there. Oh, 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 what happened? Oh, I know what happened. Uh, I missed the speech marks around the five. See? Mistakes are always made in programming, and this is where bugs come from in programs and games. Okay, I missed the speech marks. Let's put them back in. Let's run it again. Okay, so we enter our number. If we enter the number six, then, there we go, our output is actually five. Okay, so uh, it gets changed. All right, so we're looking at variables here. We're looking at various different things. We're looking at inputs and outputs. What we can do is actually make the input equal to the input. Okay, and we can see it. I, I wonder if we can. I wonder if we can increment this input. Let's see if this works in this programming language. No, it doesn't. Let's try. Is it going to have a type mismatch? Yeah, because it's trying to get a string into an integer. There are things that are quite more advanced than we're going to look at today, so we'll we won't we won't go into that part. So um, there we go. What we can do is that we can get rid of this input altogether, and we can call it something else. We can call it dim number, and we can put a number inside of our variable called number which will and we can do maths with that so if we start with the number 10 and then we can say number equals number minus 5 then what do you think our number is going to become equal to well if we save that and run it our number is equal to 5 because 10 minus 5 is 5 if we change that 5 to 2 10 minus 2 is equal to 8. So you can see how the number variable is storing this information and how the message box is a function that's displaying that on the screen. So that is really a bit of a starting point for kind of this sort of coding, kind of what we're looking at here. I think we have done a good deal of random stuff. Let me just put my screen back to how it was because we're going to close that now. There we go. And what else have we got? What else have we got? Well, the next thing on the list is coding game. So we've um, looked at various different new pieces of introductions and now we're going to have a bit of fun in coding game. So let's go into, well I've got it here somewhere on the screen already, where's it gone? Coding game, here we go, right. So uh, here's coding game. This is what coding game looks like. If you haven't seen coding game before, I highly recommend you go check it out and also check out my Let's Play series on YouTube. It does. What was that noise? Where did it come from? <laughs> I just heard a funny. Did you hear that noise? I heard that noise. It was a bit weird. Um, but what we can do is we can nip into coders strike back this is a little bit more advanced than the things we've been looking at we've been looking at some very basic stuff but i will try and step you guys through it as i'm thinking about this sort of thing so for the last 20 minutes of this live stream we're going to play some coding game okay we're just going to go in there and do some stuff and i'm going to do pretty much what i do in my let's plays but i'm going to <laughs> Gwabe says aliens are trying to communicate with me Maybe they are, maybe they're not. We, I just, I just don't know. Um, 
but I'm going to try and go through it very, very kind of bit by bit, okay? Um, and we'll look at some of the things that we've already looked at. So this is the coding game. This is actually level two of the stuff that you would see if you do the coding game stuff. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, the links in this are in the video description for you to go check this out and go have a go. Um, but let's let's have a look and see what we've got here. So in this encoding game, you are given a scenario, and that scenario has some code behind it. Now in here above me, you can see I'm highlighting it there, just above me, up there. Um, there is some code in there already, and we have to adapt that code and play around with the code to make it do something. Okay. And um, you can choose your programming language. There are so many programming languages. They are. There's just a list of some in C Sharp, C++, Java, JavaScript, Python, Bash, <gasps> F Sharp, Dart, uh, Go, uh, Haskell. I've never done Haskell before. Lua. Have I done Lua before? No. Of course I've done Lua before. I used it in my Minecraft, uh, modded Minecraft Let's Play. Perl. I've done a tiny bit of Perl before. Uh, Pascal. Did a tiny bit of that. PHP. I know PHP a bit. New host. Fantastic. Thank you very much for the host, folks. It's nice that everybody's uh, playing along. Uh, and of course, VB.net. And VB.net is something that I've been using. It's not the one I'm most familiar with, but it's the one I've been using most recently. So that's what we're going to look at now. So let's see what we can do with this. Uh, down here, we have uh, a scenario. Okay, so the goal, it says here, the goal is to win the race. Okay, so let me, can I revert? Is this, I don't know if I've played around with this code. I've just reverted it back in case I have. So, be the first to complete the laps of the circuit with your pod. So, if we go here and click play my code, we can see what happens already. Okay, so the game, what it does, it takes your code, and we have to program the AI to do this. So there's me, Master Hirsch, and I'm going around this course. I've gone through checkpoint one, I've gone through checkpoint two, and I'm normally going across the start-finish line. But as you can see, I'm behind the bot. The bot boss 2 is winning. So we're going to have to do something about that. Okay. Now, if we look down here, we can see that we are able to tell this program our thrust. And we can print out the thrust and also a couple of other things as well. Okay. Uh, we have to output the target position followed by the thrust power. So there's a X coordinate we want to head towards, a Y coordinate we want to head towards, and the amount of thrust we want to use. Well, we came second in that race, and our thrust is currently 80. Now, I have got a zoom mode for this. Let me go to zoom mode. There we go. So let's just do this. So there we go. There's 80. All right. So we need more thrust. And you can see here, it says you have to output the target position followed by the power. These things here are comments, okay? Comments are things that is put in computer code, but doesn't actually get executed by the computer program, okay? It's for the human to help understand what's in the code and what's happening. It's notes, basically, okay? So uh, here we've got, um, we've got a next checkpoint position. We get told that. You can see that so we've got some variables being dimmed here. And we get to choose what type they are, whether they're a number, whether they're a letter or a character. But we need more thrust. And here we can see at the end, our thrust is set to 80 at the moment. Well, I read in the notes over here that our thrust can be up to a maximum of 100. I don't know where it says that. It says that around here somewhere. Yeah, constraints. Thrust has got to be between or equal to 0 and 100, okay? So if our thrust can be 100 and it's 80, well, I'm going to change that to 100. There we go. So I've just changed the number there at the bottom of the screen, this 100. Okay, so this is vb.net, this programming language we're using at the moment. So if we just zip back to the full screen, we can then play this code. And we've changed it from 80 to 100. And hopefully, this will make us go faster. Let's see what happens. So as you can see, we're pretty much neck and neck as we go across the first checkpoint. A big, long loop round there. We go off the edge of the screen and another big, wide turn. Now, I've got a feeling that we may not win this. Okay, that bot is slightly ahead, just by a nose. Okay, which isn't really 
really the best, is it? Oh. Now you can see that he, he's actually saying it up here. He says, you're going too fast in the curves. I'm going too fast. He's going too fast. And of course, we lose and come second. So let's have a look at the information we've got. So let's go back to our code. Let's zoom in on that. Right. So let's have a look here. So we've got checkpoints X and Y. I think... Hmm... We need a way to work out if we're in the middle of turning, don't we? And there's some, there's a there's a, a piece of code here that says uh, a simple algorithm that uses the angle is the following, and it says that. Uh, hang on, you can't see that. Let's just go back over here. So on the left hand side here, where I'm highlighting, there's some simple code that it helps us with. It says if, and this is a conditional statement. It says if the next checkpoint angle is greater than 90, or the next checkpoint angle is less than minus 90, then the thrust is equal to zero. And if the thrust isn't, and if that condition isn't true, then we put our thrust to 100. So basically what this code is saying is saying, well, if the checkpoint is too far around that way or too far around that way, let's make our thrust zero so that we can turn on the spot and then fire off. So let's steal this code. We're going to steal this code and we're going to put it in here. Okay, so um, when we're doing coding, we use space, white space, what we call white space, to indent our words so that we can help read what's there. Okay, so let's have a closer look at that code now. Okay, let's just scroll down a little bit. So this is the if statement that I've just uh, pasted in. Okay, so uh, there, uh, hello, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher your name here. Is that Mr. Zakenroy? Hello? Hello, everybody in the Twitch chat. Um, so we've got our next checkpoint angle, which we're told by the input of five. So we, we don't need to mess around with that too much. What we do need to do is you can see that we are, what we're doing, we're making this variable thrust equal to zero. Now, if you remember, we've got a variable which is like a box, but it needs a label. And we haven't done that in this yet. OK, so we're going to get this thrust, OK, that we want to use as a variable and we're going to dim thrust and we're going to dim it as an integer, which basically tells us that only numbers go in that box. Only numbers are going into this variable. OK, now we now we've told the program that we've got this value. We've got this variable called thrust. We can do things with it. In this case, we're setting it to zero or we're setting it to 100. OK, and then what we need to do is instead of saying to the program, well, you need to go 100, we need to tell it to go whatever's inside our variable. OK, so let's get rid of that 100. OK, and what we need to do is we need to concatenate them together. OK, so to concatenate these together, concatenate basically means this. OK, concatenate is basically stick stuff together. All right, and in this programming language, which we're using, new B follower, fantastic. Thanks for the follow, folks. Um, this programming language, VB.net, concatenate is just an AND symbol, which is kind of nice. In some programming languages, it's a plus, and in others, it's other things. So, what we're going to do is, you can see this on the screen now, is that I've taken out that 100. We had. One, oh no, not not 1200. We had 100 written in here. Okay, so we're going to take out that 100. Okay, and then we're going to concatenate onto the end with our and symbol uh, the whatever is in our variable of thrust. Now let's see if that works. It kind of looks like Lua. Eh, it's not too far off. It's not too far off, I guess. Uh, so let's play that code and see what happens. So let's come out of zoom mode. There we are. And play the code. Now, this time, if we've done this right, when we get near a check, when a checkpoint is too far behind us, our thrust turns down. So you can see we've gone past a point there. And did our thrust turn down? Let's have a look. Yes, our th you can see down here in the bottom left hand corner where it says standard output stream. New follower. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lucky. Thanks for the follow. You can see as we're turning around these corners, our thrust is going down. And then as we're coming... New follower. 
fantastic. Um, thanks for the follow, guys. But um, yeah, you can see as we're hitting these checkpoints, our thrust was going down, allowing us to turn um, sharper, and we came first. It, that one kind of got gave us the answer. This code take, it take, uh, takes me back to 1999. I used to love VB. Um, I, I love VB. I do. Um, should we go on? Uh, let's, should we play around with this a little bit? Let's, let's play around with this a little bit. Um, so, let's, instead of thrust, let's, let's just put, let's put some stupid things in just to see what happens. Let's make thrust equal to 100. Okay, let's just put that right there. And instead of next, instead of using the coordinate for the next checkpoint where we want to go, let's put something in like... Let's, uh, well, what's the middle of the screen? Do we know what the screen is? Um, I don't think we do. Let's have a look at the constraints. Um, response for time for the fast turn. Response time per turn. Mm, not sure. Not sure. I, I, don't, I, don't remember, I don't remember seeing it. Let's set it to... Let's, what, let's, let's turn this line of code here into a comment. So we can save it. There we are. Let's say our next checkpoint is going to be equal to 1,000 and see what happens. Well, in fact, let, let's just let's put it all in manually. Let's say 1,000, 1,000, and 100 power. Okay, let's put that out there and see what happens. Let's see what happens with this code. It's just going to just go. So, uh, what's... Oh, there he is! <laughs> He just went off. I don't know if you saw that. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. He just went off in a random direction and just kept going straight. Oh no, he's, he's, he's spinning around all over the place. Hey, look, he's just gone. I have no idea what he's doing over there. No idea at all. He's just spinning around in circles now. He's out of control. We've broken him. We've broken him. Um, th that makes me want to do some bot coding. Then, then you need to get on coding game and do some bot coding because it is fantastic. Okay, let's take our uh, our playful code out, put our correct code back in. We just got to play test this one more time. Uh, my velocity takes me uh, on a slingshot. It does look like it's doing that. It does look like it's taking me on a slingshot here. So there we go. So you can see that as we go past the, uh, that particular point, the power of the engines dips down and it allows us to turn uh, quite nicely and do quite nicely. Um, he should make a circle in the middle of the screen. Uh, Whoopi Monster, Whoopi Monster, is that you, Andy? Um, nice to see you if it is. Um, I don't know if 500, 500 will be the middle of the screen, but um, should we give it a quick try? We'll give it a very quick try then. Just because you guys wanted to see it. So 500, 500, power 100. Let's just do that quickly. Hello Andy, welcome to the stream. Thanks for coming along. So let's see what happens here. Where, where's my bot going to go? No, he just went off the edge of the screen. I have no idea. I have no idea. Let, let's put that code back then and move on to uh, the next one. We're going to do uh, the next one. This is one of the things I love about coding game because you can try out so many different things apart from just just going for the main thing. So, in fact, you can see the current coordinates at the bottom of the screen down here where my mouse cursor is highlighting. So, our current coordinates... I don't know where he's gone. Yeah, he's, he's in lead. Our current coordinates are in the like 11,000 marks. So, yeah. A pixel is a coordinate. Not always in coding game. Uh, I had a different one. You can turn debug mode and say, oh yeah, of course, we can do the debug mode. Uh, settings, debug on. There you are, look. Uh, so let's close this. Look there. If we can see the debug mode, we can see the core. Oh, let's should we, should we see if we can make it go around in circles. Seven thousand by four thousand. I'm sorry, folks. I'm going to have to try this. I'm just interested. So seven thousand by four thousand. Let's not 
put a stupid amount of power in. Let's give it let's give it 20 power and see how fast it goes. It is a brilliant game for this sort of thing. Okay, so I'm going really slowly. You can see where I'm heading towards there. He's probably just going to spin around in the middle. Yeah, there you are. He's starting to spin around. Okay, so that was fun. Let's turn the debug mode off and move on to the next game. So uh, let's put that back to how it was. Uh, submit. Okay, so we get, you get to submit your answer. Uh, that noise was a notification from you guys. Oh, oh right. I had Coding Game running in the background. <laughs> Thank you very much, Coding Game, guys. Uh, I, oh, God, I don't know how to hide that now. There we are. Um, so the good thing about Coding Game as well is there's a whole other section behind it that you can play around uh, and kind of... You can see that I'm rank 2 in this one at the moment. Um... And if you want to follow me on Coding Game and you want to get involved on Coding Game, then you, you go and find me and uh, we can join in. But should we, should we see if we can do the next one now? Let's see. Um, let's see what we've got here. What's happening now? We came second in that one. That's fine. Do I, do I actually have to come first to be able to move on to the next one? Uh, let's just play it again so we come first. There we go. I've been promoted. Fantastic. Let's continue. Right. Uh, we've made it to the next lead. We now have access to the boost. Oh, fantastic. Okay. We're going to have to have a quick load, a quick go with the boost. No, 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 no. That's not the wrong one. Go back, back, back. Right. Here we go. So now we've got a new situation. We have access to boost, which gives us an extra new edge during the race. follower. Fantastic. Thanks for following, Whoopi. The goal is again to win the race. Okay. You can use one... Uh, acceleration boost in the race. New follower. Fantastic. And let's have a look here. Thrust value of the pod. So it looks like we've got the code from last level. We can just add some extra bit of code in um, to be able to do that. Two integers, uh, the target corners, and five followed by the pod. Okay. Ah, there's just so much here. Uh, game information. Let's see. Right. So in summary of the new rules. Um, oh, we actually use the keyword boost. Okay. So I, I guess we could do a, a boost at the beginning. I, I, I don't know. Let's have a look. So, do we put an extra out once per race? You may substitute your desired thrust with the word boost. Oh, right. Okay, so thrust becomes boost. Right, okay. But that's only once per game. So what we need to do is track used boost. So we're going to go dim. And we're going to go uh, boost used. Okay. And we're going to use it as an integer. Okay, there we are. And we're going to set boost used to zero because we haven't used our boost. And we could probably actually need to do this outside of the loop. Yeah, we need to do it outside of the game loop. There we go. So we're doing the variable. Let's zoom in on the text. Can you see that? So here we are. We've dimmed a variable called boost used, set it as an integer and set it to zero. That means we haven't used our boost. Okay. Now what we're going to do, we're going to say... We're going to say we're going to use it. I'm going to say if boost used is equal to zero, and oh, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. And the next check uh, and checkpoint angle. And so basically, I'm putting some ands in, which means the angles coming up to the checkpoint are going to be less than 10 and greater than minus 10. So basically what I'm saying is if we haven't used the boost yet, boost equals zero, 
and the next checkpoint angle is quite straight ahead, then we're going to use our boost. Uh, we, do we need a then in this programming language? Yes, we do. Then thrust becomes equal to boost. I wonder if it's going to work. I've never done this before. And then also we need to set boost used. Okay. Tweakle one. To say that we're not going to use our boost ever again. And then we're going to end our conditional if statement. There we go. Right. So let's see what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Hellish has an idea. This is scary. It is scary indeed. So there we go. We've written some code. Let's see if it, the code that we've written triggers this um, boost. Let's see what happens. God, well, I don't know what that was. Was that the last one? Oh my goodness. We've got we've got an error. Oh my goodness, look at all this error down uh uh switch. Look look, look at all this error down here in the corner. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, if we if we actually pl um, play the test case, you see that it comes up and says, uh, "I declared thrust as an integer, but boost is a word." Oh yeah, you're right. I did. That might be. A, there's a type mismatch there. Let's try doing that and changing that and see what happens. I haven't declared it as an integer now. I just ah, we're off. We're off. Have we used our boost yet? I don't know. I didn't see if we've used our boost. I think we did use boost right at the beginning. Gave us a really quick start. I'm really confused about which way my craft is going. It, get, it did give us a head start. I think the other guy is catching up. What we need to do is write a console error write line debug message. And just say boost used. So we know if the boost has been used or not. Okay, so let's try it again. Let's try it again. See what happened. Okay, so boost used has been changed to 1. So the boost was used at the very, very beginning. So it kind of looks. What about changing the next uh, checkpoint angle greater than 10 etc to equal zero so you mean if it's just a dead straight line we could try that we could try that we're coming to the end of the stream now so this is the last thing that we will try uh whilst this is running i'd just like to say thank you very much for everybody who's watching um you guys have been brilliant in the chat i will be doing more of this in the future so keep an eye out on my Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr, and all that sort of thing. Uh, did we win? I, I missed it. Did we win? We won. We did. Um, we used the boost at the beginning to get a head start, but what we can do is we're going to make this last change. And we're going to go down here, and instead of having it between 10 and 10, we're going to make it equal 0. Okay, so only if we're dead straight. And I don't know if that's going to do it. So let's carry on. Um, I do have... Um, what about calculating the speed vector and subtracting it multiply by three from the next? Or I, I'm not quite sure about doing that right now, Mad Knight, um, because we're actually ending the stream. But if you want to see more coding game, I do have a Let's Play on my channel, and we'll see that soon. But let's find out if changing this uh, checkpoint angle to zero has changed the way that it runs. I'm literally everywhere, yes. So, here we go. So, it looks like... It looks like we did actually again use our boost at the very beginning because it was a straight line and that was a bad time to use it. So in this particular uh, scenario, that didn't work. It didn't do very well. So, yeah. Indeed. Well, we, we could put other um, conditions in that says if you're, you have to be far enough away from a checkpoint uh, in terms of distance and things like that. But we, we will look at that 
uh, maybe in a let's play. I think we'll actually have to carry this one on in a let's play. So let's show you the, what happened. So if we, plow the, we, if we play the code, so here we go, the code is loading. And you can see here that the standard error stream in the bottom corner that I'm highlighting says 1. So it used our boost right at the very beginning. Right at the very, very beginning. It did, because we set boost use to 0 and then it boosted right away. So it didn't work very well. Didn't work very well at all. Well, we're going to leave those guys spinning around. For my regular viewers and anybody who might be interested, I'm doing an open TTD viewers game tomorrow night. Check out my website and my Facebook if you want to know more about that. But my next big event is my 24-hour live stream in aid of the Great Ormond Street Hospital Charity. So if you do want to check that out, um, it is going to be live from 12 o'clock UK time on December the 17th. Again, all the details about that are on my website and on my Facebook. So, um, yeah, there we go. Uh, shall I put, I'll put my face, can I put my face on here? Let's see. Uh, um, let's try it. Uh, there we go. So, yes, we're going to say goodbye now. Uh, there's lots of people looking forward to the 17th. I can't wait for it. Thank you very much to Coding Game for having an awesome game but also uh for in inviting me to do this i think it was a brilliant idea i really enjoyed it hope you guys enjoyed it too and there is going to be more of this on my youtube channel um there already is i'm going to keep playing it i'm loving it um, maybe i can do some more but thank you very much coding game thank you very much everybody who's joined in take care see you soon and for now it's goodbye it's goodbye folks <laughs> Oh, see you soon. Thanks.